My name is Frank Scalacci. I'm with the Charlottesville Regional Chamber of Commerce. We are the co-sponsor of this wonderful event with Elmore County, along with several of you. We're delighted you're here today. Uh, last year at this time, we had snow. We did carry the uh, conference on, but it was uh, difficult for many people to be here, so we're happy. We have beautiful weather, maybe a little chilly. Um, we, uh, this is our second annual agribusiness conference. Very successful last year, so we thought we'd try it again. And uh, like we said, we're delighted you're here. Uh, we have several speakers this morning. We have a wonderful exhibit hall, a nice lunch, um, several opportunities for you to interact with many people in the agribusiness, agritourism world. I'm not going to delay you any longer uh, at this point. I'm going to ask our wonderful Board of Supervisor member, Ann Malik, to welcome you as well, and we'll kick off the program. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Being a school teacher, I'll skip the microphone. But I've also wanted to advance my welcome to you all, and thank you all for participating. Today we're going to focus on marketing strategies and ideas, and based on last year's feedback, we're using a slightly different format, going a mile wide and an inch deep, instead of spending a lot of time going deep in one subject. We've consolidated the speaker program and expanded the topics into very short presentations and have one kickoff question per speaker after each one and then move on. And then if you have additional questions, we hope that you will reach out to the speakers who will be available throughout the day and also in room 235 after their presentation. We'll have lunch at noon and then beginning at 1, please join us for one of the three concurrent sessions, one on livestock issues, one on regional food identity, and the third is a social media boot camp where you can get all sorts of direct one-to-one -one help uh, with particular questions which you have. I'd now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Carroll County Administrator Gary LaRoe, who will speak with us about the successes in his locality. I'm so happy Gary's able to be here today. I heard him at the Baco conference in November and was really excited to hear about the things they've accomplished and tried to figure out what we could easily transport or quickly transport here to Albemarle to help us out. So thank you, Gary, for helping us and coming today. Great to see you all. Uh, it's good to be here this morning. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me fine. Are everything okay there? Um, appreciate that opportunity. And uh, one of the things that what we've been doing in Carroll County is that it's a historical passion, I think, of agriculture. Uh, something that we have been uh, dealing with for a long time. And it, uh, one of the things that we have talked about in Carroll and Hex, we actually we're working on, is helping to produce uh, something to market, was one of the things, also developing some partnerships, and also to being able to uh, develop the next generation of folks for agriculture and being able to make that a sustainable operation. One of the things that we've had a tremendous support from is the Board of Supervisors. Of course, Ann knows all of the complexities that are associated with that, and one of the things that, that has been happening in Carroll is that we have a list of priorities that are associated with the board, and one of those things is about agriculture. One of the reasons for that is because of the economics that are associated with that. Also, the other thing that, uh, that we've talked about was the development of partnerships, and the, the third thing that we've talked about is the continued development of community assets within Carroll County. The, uh, the reason why the Board of Supervisors are involved is basically economics and knowing the kind of people that we have in our community. The, uh, the food sector, uh, if you go back and look at 2008, whenever we ended up having the crash that ended up taking place, is that the food sector actually did not crash as, as badly as other places did. And so one of the things was we were looking for something that uh, could end up helping to sustain the community as well as a historical perspective of that. Another thing is, is that if you look at transportation cost and energy cost, there's an additional about $6,000 per tractor and trailer load from California, which is suffering from one of the worst droughts that's taken place throughout the, uh, the nation. And that in itself has uh, precipitated a more eastward production of agriculture in, in, the, in uh, the United States. Also, searching for new economic opportunities within the community and being able to that was driving this associated, and then the full spectrum of, of employment opportunities. If you stay on some of the other aspects of things, like um, advanced manufacturing as an example, there's only a certain level of people that can end up taking 
part within that, and then you have the trickle down effect from that. If you look at agriculture, there's something available from everyone in the spectrum that is from the illiterate that may have not finished high school, uh, which we have a very high rate of, of uh, completion, but from those that are, are low on the scale all the way up to the PhD scientists. And there, that is one of the only sectors that you can end up doing that. Uh, the other thing that we've ended up doing is a partnership with the school system, uh, partnership within our region, and then also the creation of a food commission, of which we actually have a member here right mm -hmm. now. So. Uh, who is eating a... Uh, I'm trying to demonstrate what the Food Commission is all about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Steve, Steve will be talking to you later, I think. But one of the things is about the K-12 uh, educational project is that we, uh, we've actually got a school farm that is associated with that. Uh, one of the only couple of those uh, school farms within the state of Virginia that's K-12 education. And you can see uh, some of that 90-acre school farm that's there. Uh, greenhouses, uh, we've got field production, we've got some livestock production that's associated with that. And actually uh, some of the uh, raspberry and uh, uh, blackberry kind of production inside the greenhouses that, that are there. So we're trying to develop a new generation of people that can end up taking over. Uh, this and also showing them the opportunities that are there for uh, agriculture as a sector for their future development. The next thing is that uh, we're actually uh, today uh, we're uh, in, in process of developing a STEM lab, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math lab for agriculture inside the K-12 system. And the reason for that is to actually develop those next level scientists that are associated with agriculture in our community and having something to provide back to the community on a higher level. So that is something that is under contract and they're actually under construction today on that. Uh, if you go back to 1917, the Smith Hughes Act, which was the, the act that created agricultural education within high schools, the first high school in the state, in the nation, actually to, to uh, actually take part in that Smith Hughes Act was in Carroll County. And now one of the first STEM labs for agriculture, and actually we've, we've not got that verified, but we feel as if that is the first STEM lab for agriculture is actually back in Carroll County. So it's something that we've got a history and a, and a passion for. One of the other things too in the partnership was about the development of a food commission. And this was not to uh, uh, show you everything on this slide, but to just give you that concept and idea is about the passion that we have for food, is that we ended up going to the highest levels of state government and also other nonprofits and organizations and talked about the packaging, about the processing, about the future development of food within our community and region. And so that's something that has been ongoing and we've been looking at that from an economic development standpoint. Uh, site certification uh, is something else. I know Ann was just talking about a, uh, a uh, industrial uh, uh, piece of property that's in Albemarle County. We also have been working with Carroll County, Grayson County, and with the city of Galax in developing a piece of property on exit uh, 19 on I-77 about 150 acres of graded site that actually food is one of the main reasons for that site and, and uh, because of the other things that I have spoken about. One of the other things about the developing of our assets is that 20 years ago with the help of the Virginia Department of um, Agriculture and Consumer Services there was the development of four um, farmers markets across the state. There was a network of that of which we have one of those and actually the one that, that actually carries out the, the activities that were associated with the original mission. And so the Southwest Virginia Farmers Market is there and that is one of the things that we have as an asset in our community. Within that, the Wholesale Farmers Market, we, we end up having, um, you know, a lot of people have definition of a farmers market as something tailgate kind of oriented and things of that sort in our uh, 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 setting is more of a wholesale kind of market for those larger producers. And matter of fact, from an economic standpoint, that market actually does about $30 million a year in total sales throughout the, the community. And we're uh, also adding value uh, to the, uh, the crops that are coming in and meeting the commercial needs. 
Now you see this, this uh, slide, you might say, well, what is this? It's a hydrocooler is what it is. It's basically taking corn that is uh, uh, field grown corn, running it through a cold shower, if you will, through the farmer's market and adding value to that. If you look at the economics of it, just the basic math, is that the uh, shelf life of regular corn, sweet corn, is a couple days. If you end up using it, running it through the hydrocooler, you can end up extending that to two weeks and it becomes a commercial product at that point. If the value is about five bucks, we're just you're throwing out some figures here, about five bucks without it being hydrocooled and, and also with it being hydrocooled is about 18 to 20. So you're multiplying your value added by running it through this 20 to 30 minute shower of cold water. I mean, that's all, they do. that's all it is, except there's food safety involved and things of that sort. But we're actually shipping this uh, uh, nationwide. The first load this past year actually went to Kansas. And so it's sort of interesting <laughs> is that uh, we're actually uh, shipping corn to Kansas rather than the other way around. <laughs> Another thing, too, is that talking about uh, marketing opportunities. Uh, you have to have a, something to market. Well, we developed a market many years ago uh, actually, I was on the team for that, was developing uh, a market for pumpkins. And pumpkins was something that uh, no one else had really tagged on to in, in Virginia or in this part of the world. And now we have about 3,000 acres of pumpkins. Uh, and, and that fits very well with our labor sources. And it also is a $45 million crop for us uh, uh, as far as an economic impact. 3,000 trailer loads of pumpkins is a lot of pumpkins. But if you look at some of the uh, uh, other marketing opportunities that we've got is that uh, we actually delivered the pumpkins to the White House last year, uh, uh, the, the year before last, I guess. And so we, uh, you know, sort of like the Christmas tree, well, guess what, where the pumpkins came from. So, you know, we, we've been uh, playing off of that and enjoying that opportunity throughout the, the time. We also have the retail farmer's market, and uh, as part of that, and we also have a community cannery that's USDA and FDA approved. And we really see that as a food laboratory within the community so that we're trying to get to the point that we can actually have products on shelves within the, uh, uh, within the retail marketplace. And it's also building the, uh, the uh, uh, educational attainment level of the students that are associated. The expansion of the economic development opportunities is immense within ag. And we see that, and we're trying to build upon that within the community. The economic development agriculture in the next generation, we just had a, uh, an announcement back in the fall, uh, 70 new jobs that were associated with uh, agriculture. And actually, Stephen was there, and we ended up receiving the largest AFID grant uh, in the state of Virginia. It's a couple hundred thousand dollars associated with that project. And it's just showing that things are working as far as that goes. Understand that the company is doing exceptionally well and moving forward, and they are going to create the pathway and the career pathway for new producers coming into the market. This is the son and daughter of the proprietor for that business, and, uh, and they're moving uh, heaven and earth to be able to make things happen within the community and economic development. So with that, thank you very much, and uh, we'll go from there.